here as always and today we're talking about the gut have you ever heard of the saying trust your gut right there's so much more to that than what you think your gut isn't just an indicator of whether you've eaten too much ice cream or that gut into it intuition that helps you make some decisions no the gut is actually an entire microscopic universe, an entire world that lives inside of you. What if your gut feelings are trying to tell you something that could potentially affect your entire well-being? What if you really started listening to your actual gut, like not your metaphorical gut, but your actual gut? Think of your worst stomach days. What usually bothers you? Are you bloated after a big meal? Maybe you have loose stools the day after having like your favorite spicy dish. Or is it as serious as constipation or discomfort, like maybe having too much acid? Believe it or not, these are signs that your gut is crying out for attention. But when your belly is off, it's more than just your stomach problems. Because we now know that the gut is connected to your skin, your immunity, your mood, and even disorders like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. So the point is that the gut is not just about digestion and it's time that we listen. So before we jump in, I always like to let you know how to reach me and my team. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's free. It's a nice thing to do. Just do it. And if you're listening to the podcast, enjoy mowing the lawn or washing the dishes. I'm not wearing a stethoscope today, but my hair looks fabulous and I'm wearing our new method merch. You should get some. And if you aren't already following us on Instagram or TikTok, what are you waiting for? We're super funny, super informative, and we're on threads too. And if you want a copy of the show notes, no matter where we are, just type the word change anywhere and we'll get them to you. And don't forget to share this with the people you love so that they can become game changers in their lives. So let's talk about this gut thing. Let's talk about this insane world that's living inside of you right now. And I am not exaggerating. There is a whole world inside of your belly. I always try to think of it. Have you ever seen like in Men in Black? I'm asking you like you can answer me, but have you ever seen in Men in Black at the end, the cat is wearing like this small little thing and she and it's like a silver ball. And in that silver ball is an entire universe. That is what I think about when I think of the gut. There is an entire universe of living organisms in your belly. And it might sound gross, but it's actually the most amazing part of your body. And it is in charge of just everything. The gut, the GI tract, it's this super cool winding tube that starts at the mouth. And what happens between here and there is nothing short of a miracle. Yes, we know that the gut breaks down food that we eat and absorbs nutrients and, of course, eliminates what we don't eat. But that's not all that it does. Our gut also, as I said, has trillions of microorganisms. And these guys actually produce things that we need to stay alive. It's not just about feeding us. They actually have jobs and their jobs help us function. This is why gut health is so important. This is why I talk about it all the time. Let me give you some examples. Skin. Anyone who has a skin issue, it's a gut issue. Okay. So if you're dealing with psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, it's really your gut. Like you could lather cream on all day long, but until you fix that belly, it's not going to get better. Immunity. Your immune system. Do you know that about 70% of your immune system lives in the belly? So you could see how this is so much more than digestion. If you're dealing with any immune issue or autoimmune issue, you got to talk about the belly. Mood, the gut-brain connection. If you haven't seen my episode on it, please check it out. Your gut actually produces neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, the type of thing we take medications for. Our gut produces it. And of course, Weight management, for those of you who are concerned about weight management, studies show that the balance of the bacteria in your gut can actually affect your weight. It's not just a calories game, as so many people would have us believe. So if you're struggling with autoimmunity, skin issues, joint issues, hormonal issues, weight issues, you need to start the gut. And that brings us to a conversation of dysbiosis and gut imbalance. Dysbiosis is a really fancy word. I'm going to break it down for you. I want you to think of your gut like a seesaw, right? You picture a seesaw on the playground. When both sides are balanced, it's easy for the kids to kind of enjoy a smooth ride. And our gut is like that. It thrives when there's a balance of all different kinds of bacteria. Some good guys here, some not so good guys here. And you want to keep a nice balance. Ideal scenario is when this, the good guys are on one side, the less friendly guys are on the other side. And there's this balance. Everything works as it should. Because the good bacteria, like I said, not only help us break down food, fight off infection, fix our immunity, and the not so good guys, they're not so helpful. So we have to keep them in check. What happens when that balance is disrupted, right? 
one side suddenly becomes heavier. That's not a good situation to be in. That lack of balance is what we call dysbiosis. I like to say dysbiosis just means your belly's a hot mess. Dysbiosis represents a situation where that not good bacteria now take over the seesaw. They're hogging up the space. They're creating chaos. They're pushing out the friendly bacteria. They disrupt the harmony. And this triggers the skin issues, the mental health issues, the autoimmune issues. So the question is, what causes this gut imbalance? What's going on here, right? What's happening? So you know, first of all, it's going to be your nutrition. Food affects our health. And it's easy to get caught up in the standard American diet, right? But the acronym is SAD, SAD. It is so sad that people still eat the standard American diet. And now I know it's obvious because we always talk about food. And, but when we talk about food, there seems to be a conversation about food and weight loss. I want to shift that conversation away from weight and talk about gut balance. If you're consuming too much sugar, processed foods, unhealthy fats, it's basically feeding the bad bacteria in the city that we're talking about. You're beefing them up. The bad bacteria love these kinds of food. And unfortunately, the more they get of it, the bigger they become, the more colonies that they form. So when we're talking about eating and nutrition, I'm not talking about weight. I'm talking about am I feeding the bad guys or am I feeding the good guys? All right, food is kind of obvious, but something that's not so obvious that really affects your gut microbiome is stress. And I know we all have a certain level of stress that some of us are used to. And some of us actually take pride, like the more stress we are, the more value we have. And that's a whole different topic. But what I need you to know is that stress has incredible effects on the balance of the bacteria in your belly. It's not just how it affects your mind and your spirit. It actually changes your gut. Chronic stress can weaken your gut lining, making you prone to something called leaky gut. I did a whole episode on that. Making it easier for harmful substances to cross the gut into the bloodstream. And it also decreases a protein called mucin. And mucin has a job. Its job is to create a safe place for good bacteria. When you're stressed, you decrease mucin and that affects the good bacteria. The bacteria don't have a place to live. So when I tell you that stress affects your health, I am talking on a microscopic effect that actually affects the balance of bacteria, affects our body's natural defenses, and lets the bad guys grow and, you know, create chaos. Another biggie is sleep. Sleep, or more specifically, a lack of it, I say this all the time, I don't care how much gluten-free ice you're eating. If your sleep is not on point, your health is not on point, okay? You have to get your sleep right. The whole, the whole delicate ecosystem is completely thrown out of whack when you don't sleep. What happens when we don't sleep, we're stressed, and we already know how that affects the belly. We just talked about that. And we tend to make really bad eating choices, right? We know about that. And you're sleeping, you're tired, you're like, oh, let me just have this because it'll wake me up. And now we already know that that messes things up. So it messes our nutrition, it messes our stress, but it also messes with our circadian rhythm, the natural rhythm that we need to live in in order for all the chemicals in our bodies to be balanced. Now, these guys that live inside of you, they also have a rhythm and the lack of sleep messes with their rhythm. So when I'm talking to you about lack of sleep, again, microscopically, it is affecting the number of good guys versus bad guys. So when you pull that all nighter, remember, you are actually messing up your gut health. And of course, medications. Medications. And I know I'm not telling you not to take your medications. I am never, ever, ever telling you not to take your medication. Let's be clear on that. So some medications are crucial, and I'm not telling you to stop, but you need to recognize that it will affect your gut. One of the most notorious culprits, antibiotics. Sure, they help fight off infections, and sometimes you need them, but just like any superhero battle, right, there's collateral damage, right? They're saving the world, but then like 400 cars and buildings are getting destroyed. Antibiotics are like tornadoes in the bacterial playground. They don't just go for the bad guys. They wipe out everything in their path. So they wipe out the good guys also. And when they're done dealing with the infection, you're left with a gut that's messed up and you have to rebalance it. So the next question is, how do we improve this gut? Like, we got it. Gut is important. It affects my skin, affects my joints, affects my brain, affects my depression. How do I fix it? And this is always my favorite part, the part that is empowering, the part that gives hope because it's never too late to improve your gut health. You know I always like to provide solutions and empower you to take control of your health. If you treat these guys right, they will treat you 
right as well. So let's break it down. How do we improve gut health? So just like nutrition messes it up, nutrition can fix it. At first, before I talk about what to eat, I want to talk about how to eat. Mindful eating. Notice that I have to slow down my energy when I say that. I have to remind myself also. Mindful eating means you're really paying attention to your food, the smell, the texture, flavor, every single bite. It means not scrolling while you're eating or working while you're eating. It's just eating while you're eating. There are so many benefits to this. It slows you down. Look, just talking about it slowed me down. We eat slower. It helps our digestion. We swallow less air and it allows your body to absorb every bit of nutrient from your meal. And research has shown for those of you who are dealing with weight loss, by slowing down, this method supports weight loss, which is kind of awesome. And now we talked about how to get our food. Of course, we have to talk about what it is that we're eating because food plays a huge role in the state of your gut health. There's just no two ways about it. The good guys in your gut need to eat. You have to give them a diverse menu filled with a lot of nutrition. We're talking about good quality proteins, a rainbow of fruits and vegetables, especially those deep, dark colors, and plenty of healthy fats. Feed these guys well, and they will take care of you. Water. I know it seems obvious, but we need water. You know that feeling when you're like super thirsty and you're drained and you just need to rehydrate? Imagine how your gut is feeling. Remember this living stuff inside of you. They need hydration. Hydration is key to keep your gut bacteria happy. It keeps the environment running smoothly, helps them function at their best. Just like we can't survive without water, neither can they. Don't make them go thirsty. Now, when I say that, please, you don't need the obnoxious, huge jug of water and walk around with it, letting everybody know you drink water. Just drink the water. It doesn't have to be like a whole social statement. Okay, said my piece. And of course, we discussed the need to sleep. Your gut needs beauty sleep too. Research shows a strong link between getting a solid night's sleep and having a thriving gut microflora. So when the stars come out, it's time to power down the phones, make your room peaceful, dark. Make sure the room is cool. I know my wife wins this argument every time. The room has to be cold to sleep well. And you need to aim for a solid seven to eight hours of sleep every night. I know it's not easy. I did a whole episode on that, giving you some tips on how to get there. Let's give these gut microbiomes a rest. They also need to rest. Things need to power down. And of course, you guys always ask me about supplements. But before I tell you about the supplements, I always want to say, please, 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 please don't skip the basics and go for the supplements. There is no magic. You can't eat the pizza and the beer and sleep for two hours and then expect to take a supplement and be right with God. It doesn't work that way, okay? If you're doing your best, supplements are the cherry on top, the extra 10% that levels you up. It's never instead of. They're there to support you and support your gut, okay? So let's talk about that. It's always there to complement your nutrition, but never to replace. So top of the list, of course, probiotics. Probiotics, they are live microorganisms. You are literally taking live guys and putting them inside your belly, okay? And that helps support the overall balance and diversity. Remember, we want a lot of good guys. We're putting the good guys inside and it just helps support that balance and diversity. Give your gut like a friendly boost for their army. You put these good guys in the system and you already know that's gonna improve digestion, help your immune system, promote a positive mood. A lot of people will notice that once they start taking probiotics, their depression gets better, their anxiety gets better. You wanna look for one that has multiple strains and billions of lives of live cultures to really make a difference. And yeah, we do sell it on our website, thenewmethod.com slash store, but I don't care where you get it, just get it. The only thing I would say is I don't recommend starting with probiotics if your GI is currently a mess. You wanna try to calm your belly first, do some elimination nutrition, calm it down before you introduce it. Because if you introduce it too early, it's been my experience that it can make things worse instead of better. So timing is important when it comes to probiotics. Next on our list is prebiotics. Prebiotics is basically the food to feed the bacteria. It's the fish food for the fish, okay? So if you have probiotics, you gotta feed them, that's prebiotics. You find it mostly in food, high fiber foods, but of course you could also take it in the supplement and they help to nourish and fuel the growth of the good guys. And when we're shopping for prebiotics, you wanna make sure there's certain ingredients in it like inulin, FOS, and GOS, fructo-oligosaccharides and galacto-oligosaccharides. They're really long, but you just look for SOS or GOS. 
fiber supplements. Fiber supplements also help a lot of people, especially if you're not consuming enough fiber-rich foods. A fiber supplement can really help because fiber is essential. You actually need it to create certain neurotransmitters and certain enzymes. There's two types of fiber, soluble and insoluble, and a good supplement will have a mix of both to ensure that you're covering all the bases. And that includes flax seeds, apple pectin. Those are like pretty common. And then there's a very specific supplement that is so awesome for your belly, and that is called L-glutamine. L-glutamine is an amino acid, and it really helps with your gut lining specifically. So if you're a leaky gut person, L-glutamine should be in your stash. Some studies suggest that supplementing with L-glutamine helps reduce inflammation and starts repairing that gut lining. And of course, for anyone with gut, leaky gut syndrome, you want that. So look for l glutamine in a supplement. And whenever possible, there are pure powdered forms as opposed to mix with other things. And that tends to be the best. So a recap, your bottom line, a healthy gut is a healthy you. Remember, we are what our gut bacteria eat. So be kind to your gut and it will return the favor. And as always, if you want to work with me and my team, we are at the new method, new is spelled with a K because you always knew there was a better way. We're on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, threads. And the reason I call it new, as I said, because you guys always knew there was a better way. I hope this helps. I'll see you guys next week.